Once you stop dancing, once you get off the dance floor, nothing can happen. You're done. You've given up. I say when we hit a challenge, we're not going to stop dancing here. We're going to listen to the music that God plays for us. We're going to get in sync with that. And we're going to continue to get in step with what God wants for us. So I just want to say that wisdom is more than just knowing something or understanding something. I mean, it's applying it and it's persevering when it doesn't work out. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here, and thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. As you might be aware, this is a 26-part series where not only have we been going through the vowels in the alphabet, but consonants also. And today we've got a, a really beautiful letter. It's the letter W. And this W stands for the word wisdom. Now, it could also just stand for the word because it is in God's word that we find so very much wisdom. We find rules, regulations, and you know, the whole Old Testament is kind of a story of uh, rules being laid down, try to help people, and then rebellion, and then more rules, rebellion, and then more rules, rebellion, and then finally Jesus comes along and says, Let, let's just change the system, and he dies for our sins. And so now it's a matter of being free to obey versus this kind of obligation kind of thing. Well, back in the Old Testament, King David was winding down and Solomon was going to become the king. And Solomon asked God, when God says, what do you want, Solomon? Solomon asked God for wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. And he says, because I want to be able to do a really good job of leading these people. And I, I'm going to need all the help I can get. So rather than ask for fame or fortune, riches, or even God says, and you didn't even ask for me to kill your enemies. <laughs> so uh, God says, I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to give you all the other things that you didn't ask for. I don't think he killed his enemies. But anyway, I think he gave him so much wealth and riches and fame. We're still talking about the guy today, aren't we? Well, if you have wisdom, there's so much that's going to come into your life that will not come from any other source than God's wisdom. The wise person um, works hard, earns a good living, figures out a way to, to save some, and if possible, in whatever country you're in, if you can save some and invest some, you know, you, you do it. For others, you just spend every cent to survive. But money, wherever, whether you have a lot or a little, money doesn't become your God. You're not ruled by it. You use it or you facilitate it. And when we have wisdom, we don't let the passions that the world thinks are so important, we don't let them come to control us. You know, there was a time when there was no internet, and of course, pornography was a very rare thing. Internet comes along, now it's everywhere. There was a time when uh, using a substance to alter your mood was pretty much restricted, uh, if it wasn't a prescription, it was restricted to alcohol. But now, Marijuana is legal in so many places across the country. So many other opportunities to become dependent on something outside of yourself. Well, you know, there was a time when gambling was pretty much a thing you did over in Las Vegas or, or Jersey or someplace like that. Recently, just as pornography has proliferated all over the Internet, Everywhere you turn, there's a new app for gambling right there in the privacy of your own home. Advertising everywhere. And it's going to take a lot of people down that it wouldn't normally if it had been 
restricted. When we're wise, we just don't even dabble in something. We don't even exercise curiosity. We stay clear of something that could come to own us. So it's one thing to know the dangers of when, whenever uh, gambling gets out of hand or whenever we're uh, replacing true, intimate, authentic sex with our spouse with an experience with pornography. It's one thing to know about it, but it's wisdom that goes from knowledge to really understanding why that's a crummy thing to do. You know, we all are taught pretty early on that looking at um, dirty pictures isn't a good thing. We just don't really know why it's not a good thing. We just know we shouldn't do it. We're not supposed to. We're not entitled to see that stuff. But the wise person, once they're married or once, well, before they're married, they come to understand that pornography is something that objectifies a woman. So you see her much more in terms of a a group of body parts than see her as a whole, healthy uh, human being created uniquely by God, just like the rest of us are. A pornified woman, she, she's something less than in the mind of the guy that is using her for gratification. He may know it's not right when he comes to understand why it's not right. And he comes to understand the benefit of being authentic and real and focusing all of your desire on your spouse. He comes to make some wise choices to, at all costs, avoid pornography. Anybody that is impulsive, anybody that's fallen into some get-rich-quick schemes would do well not just to know that all of the empires of, of the folks in Vegas, all of that, all those fancy hotels, all of that, it's all made from people losing money. <laughs> the owls, did they get it? People had to lose money to get there. More people had to lose than win anything. And so wisdom says, I'm so impulsive, or I'm so wanting the easy way out, I better avoid this altogether. Maybe somebody else can do okay, but I'm going to use some wisdom here, and it's not going to be part of what I do. Wisdom is kind of the opposite of what the world values. And it's something that's deep and rich. And when you know a wise person, I mean, you want to be like them, even if you don't know how to get there. We're so interested in, in what people know, and we value what people know, versus what do they value in their heart? What's down inside? What's their character? Are they wisely using their knowledge, or are they destroying other people with it? Uh, one of my favorite game shows is Jeopardy. I like Wheel of Fortune, and I like Jeopardy a lot. And uh, Max Amodio was this guy from Harvard who was on there 38 days in a row. You can't stay on if you don't win. And he won over one and a half million dollars because of what he knew. Now, I've heard some interviews uh, with him since he was on that program, and it wasn't just about what he knew. He was a really a good guy. I hope he stays like that. So knowledge wasn't really the key characteristic. It got him some fame, but it was wisdom that made him the man that he was. If we're going to be admired by others long term without finishing very poorly, like we've seen a lot of famous people do, wisdom needs to undergird everything that we do. So, I want to know things, and then I want to understand why that's good or why it's not good, why it's positive or why it's not positive, healthy, unhealthy, and then I want to apply what I know and understand to be good for me, to be good for other people. And then here is a really key element of wisdom that's left out in a lot of studies of it. It's the word perseverance. The wise person perseveres when things don't magically work out as they predicted they would because they were following the rules or being wise. Because all I can control is me. 
I can't control all the outside forces that could transform everything that I believe true, real, valuable into worthlessness. So I persevere in wisdom. I don't just give up because I don't get the instant result that I thought I would. The wise person just keeps on going. If you ask somebody who's been in ministry with me or worked with New Life in some of the 30 plus years, almost 35 years we've been around, if they know me well, I think they would tell you that my philosophy is never stop dancing. Once you stop dancing, once you get off the dance floor, nothing can happen. You're done. You've given up. I say when we hit a challenge, we're not going to stop dancing here. We're going to listen to the music that God plays for us. We're going to get in sync with that. And we're going to continue to get in step with what God wants for us. So I just want to say that wisdom is more than just knowing something or understanding something. I mean, it's applying it and it's persevering when it doesn't work out. Now, Solomon was a really bright guy who asked for wisdom. And James writes, and it's just a wonderful passage in 1.5, James 1.5, that if you want wisdom, ask God for wisdom and He'll give it to you. So, we can sit back and read an Old Testament Bible story about Solomon and say, man, that is so cool that he was so wise and he asked God to give him wisdom. And, you know, then, we, then the story comes where the woman uh, claims someone else's baby and he said, well, let's just split the baby between the two women. And the one woman goes, no, no, don't kill that baby. And Solomon knew that's who the real mother was. He was wise. We say, oh, I want to be wise like that. Well, have you asked God? James 1.5. Pick it up, read it. It says, if you ask Him, He will give you wisdom. He won't rebuke you, it says, for asking for wisdom in current language. I think that means no points off for asking God to be wise. I hope that's helpful to you. And if you're struggling, if there's something that you know isn't healthy, you don't understand why you cling on to it, you need some wisdom to help you with it, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And we'll find a very wise Christian counselor or maybe a Christ-centered life recovery group that can help you with that very destructive thing. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time on Going Deeper. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.